Hello there everyone. Today I'm going to tie a small uh, fly that is good both for the Danish sea trout but also have been proved and proven on uh, numerous occasions for saltwater fish like uh, like bonefish. This is going to be a fairly uh, fairly easy but uh, well let do not be deceived by by the easiness of this fly or uh, this fly really is a killer. We're going to use some uh, some rubber legs in tan. Then we're going to use some glisten glow in tan as well, and then some uh, some SLF salt water dropping in uh, in the color sand. Well, first of all, I take uh, two rubber legs and I tie them down here on top of my hook. This hook is uh, Chemco 811S, which is a very 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 strong, very. Uh, a trustworthy hook for uh, for uh, sea trouts. It's uh, it's non-corrosive, which means that uh, this hook will last uh, for many trips, uh, even to uh, to quite warm climates. Um, okay, like that. So I've tied these two rubber legs in. These are barred ten rubber legs, so uh, so that uh, they stick out on uh, on each side of the of the hook in a V. Then I'm pulling on this material fairly hard so it's important that you have uh, you have secured it uh, properly down uh, down in the bottom like so all the way up here to the eye just gonna let's make sure that this is exactly as I want it already Like so. Just gonna cut these off so they're not as, as long as and, and as dangly. Like that. Moving my thread backwards down to uh, to where I tied down the tail, so these two, uh, two uh, rubber legs. Then I'm gonna take some of this uh, glisten glow and tan and I'm gonna mix it up with uh, the sand colored uh, uh, SLF. And what I'm doing is I'm basically just taking the two dubbings, laying them on top of one another and just pulling them apart, turning things over, pulling them apart, turning things over and uh, just well, mixing it up so I get these uh, these flash, flash strands, these ten flash strands from the Gliss and Glow in, uh, mixed into my uh, SLF dubbing just to add a bit more uh, well, <laughs> excitement like so, gonna make a small dubbing loop Taking my thread forward. Oh, what we really want to do now is is to apply some uh, some. Uh, well, if you're in Denmark, then lead is, is prohibited. So you're going to use non-lead wire. If you are anywhere in the world, uh, then you can use lead wire. I am I am using uh, well lead wire here. No, no, that's not lead wire. Of course, that is non-lead wire. Sorry, but if you have lead wire, that will be uh, be uh, good for this as well. What I was doing there was actually a bit faulty because I want this to be in the uh, in the front of the fly up here, so that when I'm tapering my body, I am sure that it's going to be thicker on uh, on the f on the front end. Taking off this material. If you're using this for bone flesh on uh, bonefish on, on let's say uh, fairly uh, fairly shallow flats, uh, what you what you want to do is you want to take uh, your your uh, your weight and just put it on the top of the fly, kind of like just tying in uh, a few strands like this on top of the fly because then the fly will turn over in the water and uh, as you stop stripping the fly will will land on the, will sit on the surface of the bottom with the hook pointing upwards this is, uh, is is an advantage because then you won't get snagged as much and that is also why uh, flies like uh, Charlie and stuff like that is, is, is made upside down to ensure that when you're fishing in very shallow water uh, that your hook do not get snagged as much as it would if, if the, the hook tip was pointing downwards. So I'm just attaching uh, some of this uh, dubbing mix I've made 
into my loop here, like that. Locating my dubbing reel. Then I get this nice and fluffy looking uh, dubbing material, body material here. Just gonna turn this over the hook. Every once in a while I'm just making sure that my dubbing is how I want it to be. This fly doesn't uh, look like anything in particular, any one uh, specific uh, uh, kind of, uh, of, well, uh, of, of food for bonefish or sea trout, but uh, that's one of the strong things that, that this fly really has going for it, because it's, it's what I would like to call a multi-imitation. It, it looks like, well, most things without exactly looking like any one thing, and that is uh, strength. On, uh, on many uh, patterns, I think, because uh, this generally, generally just looks like food. And well, um, the only way a trout or a bonefish has to test out something, if it's edible or not, is actually to grab it with its mouth, because it don't have any hands. And I think uh, that uh, that is one of the reasons why it's actually possible to uh, to catch trout on a fly or a lure for that matter because uh, let's face it most of our imitations and our flies and our lures doesn't look that much like the real thing but well uh, fish do not have hands so they have to grab the things with their mouth and this one has a small pointy surprise for a bonefish or a trout Well, maybe I should just cut these off a bit more. Something like that. The same in the back end. There you go. Uh, the Fugi. A very famous Danish pattern made by a very fam famous Danish fisherman uh, who is, well, uh, one of the pioneers in, in Danish coast coastal fishing. His name is uh, Klaus Eriksen and he is, well, <laughs> Uh, a, a guy to look up to for sure. Well, those were the words. Thank you very much for listening.